Good morning. So we have maybe one hour to, Steph's given me a topic that uh, we could probably speak about for three days. We will try and do something within one hour and see what happens. Um, let's start with a little bit of text that I wrote. You allowed me to run with you through the desert. You paved the way for me. I was always proud of how fit my mom was, and that will never change. I ran because you ran, I ran because of you, and I'll run until I cannot, and I'll always run for you. The reason why I share that is because I think if we want to develop mindset and be more aware of mindset, we have to go back to motivation, and motivation, hello, motivation comes from going to the source. So, I presume you're here because <clears throat> you have faced challenges mentally through running. To be honest, it's really none of this stuff is about running, it's mainly about life, because it's all exactly the same. It's very, it's very, that's okay, it's very holistic. But if you don't understand the source of why you're doing something, then the discipline and motivation to do that thing runs out quite quickly. And if we take that back into running, I'm sure everyone here has been at some point in any type of run, it doesn't matter if it was an easy run, hard run, or the drive to run, and just gone, why am I actually doing this? Has everyone experienced that? Yeah. yeah. Multiple times? Yeah, it happens all the time, right? And in some of those moments, if you don't have the answer to the why, you turn around in the car and go back, you just stop. And when you stop something, because we're all high achievers, or we all want to be high achievers, we then feel like we failed, and this whole thing kind of spirals down. And that's why everything really is built not only on running. Running's a really good metaphor for life. So what we'll try and do within the next 59 minutes is play with some different ideas, share some thoughts. I'm interested to hear some things. So it'll work really well if you talk and answer questions. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just talk and you'll probably fall asleep. Um, I think there's one thing before we jump in that we all are incredibly different, right? And I think we have to understand that. So with a talk like this or a session like this, I kind of mainly say if you leave with three things and you actually manage to action one, we've done really, really well because we might talk about a number of different ideas. And some of, some of us, our mind works quite small and quite narrow, and we're very good at compartmentalizing things, and we like to compartmentalize things. We like to think that, you know, I'm here now, this is my break from all the stuff out there. Whereas others, and that's good, others can be a lot broader. We see things through a really big lens, and everything is holistic, and that's got its positives and negatives as well, because every time we want to do anything, we consider everything in the universe before we actually do one thing, and that cripples us as well. We're all somewhere between here and here, and that's absolutely fine. So some of the things that we discuss, some tools that some people share for developing mindset, and some things that people say, will absolutely not apply to you. And that's good. If they did, then we'd be all the same. Does that make sense? So if something that, not just what I say today, but wherever, with regards to running, with regards to mindset, if something doesn't work, if you sort of are one of these people here that it's quite narrow, and the idea is a little bit like way removed here, just let it sit there. It doesn't matter. And maybe one day you'll decide to just bring it, this guy in. Does that make sense? A lot of people will discount stuff or throw ideas away because they're not quite working in that moment because of how your mind works. Quick summary on this diagram. We're all very, very different. And that's OK. And we're all very beautiful at the same time. But I find a lot of people <coughs> give me the best 
She's done it to me a hundred times. Give me the best podcast to listen to before this race on Sunday. Like it's really tricky, that one. Make sense? Cool. Could use paper and keep all of this stuff. Easy. Now you guys can talk. Number one, what is anyone's first memory of running? Go. School. School. Yeah. Let's draw this out. Tell me about it. Or tell us all about it. Made, mud, and endless is all I'm hearing there. And rain. And rain. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Did we speak before? <laughs> cool. Anyone else? Yeah. Good. Anyone else? Maybe a third example of our first memory of running. So parents, <laughs> race <laughs> after dinner. <laughs> And they time you. Cool. Of course, I'm not done. How did that make you feel? Sometimes it's fun. <laughs> 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 it was made to feel like it's all that we have to do. Mm. So, if we could wrap it up, it was a lot more negative than positive, right? Cool. How did that make you feel that you couldn't run 100 meters? Incompetent. Incompetent. <laughs> My writing's real good, eh? Don't worry. It's a fun memory. This is a fun memory, right? Yeah. And it's no surprise that you told your story with a huge smile, whereas you two, we're smiling now because it's funny, but it's not real. There was a little bit of fun at times, as we said. What happens in these, this is a little bit later because it's in adulthood, but this is, both of these are in childhood. And... Our brain takes a picture of what's going on and it stores it at the back and it's our subconscious mindset. So is it any surprise? And I'm sure some, everyone else has got a story like this, right? If we had more time, we'd break out and we'd discuss it and we'd get really deep and some people would cry and that would be nice too. And yeah. oh, it's good. It's really interesting. Because running, like, this is actually one of my memories of running. If you couldn't do something at school, go and run laps. Normally outside, normally on a field, normally it was cold, and you know, <laughs> and it's like, it's a, it's a punishment. Running's the easiest punishment for bad kids. So is it a surprise that we endured this for maybe a number of years in school, that when we come to run as adults and something's not quite right, the brain starts to give us the pictures of what happened way back. So the most important thing from here is if you have not great feelings about running, that's actually really normal. It's totally fine. If you're driving to a run, 
see Steph at 5.59 on a Monday or a Wednesday, and there's nothing against Steph. <laughs> you know, you just like, this is shit. It's fine. It's absolutely okay, because that's what your brain has been programmed to do. What we're going to try and do is to create a space where we look more at the positive side and actually at the stuff that we enjoy. Let's jump to that quickly now. Who's got a super successful running story that they want to share? Come on. <laughs> Next, yes. <laughs> So you had loads of really good uh, beginner gains. So from starting from a half all the way to the full, and you're always smiling. It was fun. That looks like fuck, eh? <laughs> Be careful with that. <laughs> Someone else. Can't have three bad experiences. Yours was a good experience, actually, Mary. Any more good experiences with running? Yeah. You enjoyed that. Yeah. When you run now, do you think of those times? And they, they bring back good memories as well. So you're already using tools that, because it, it works on the flip side, right? The subconscious works in, in two ways. It'll, the good memories come back and they drive us forward as well as the bad. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then I was maybe 25. I don't know what caused me to go out and run cross country race. I don't know why. I was like, I've just been running and I did that. And it, it was part of a team. And I remember at the end, the team captain coming up and jumping on my back and saying, Yay, you can run. And it never occurred to me that, that it was something that I could do okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, I started to enjoy it. Very cool. <clears throat> I'll share a quick story, actually, when I ran my first marathon, which was in 2010. And thinking about what we've spoken about so far going to the source, my source was completely wrong. I, in 2009, I just finished playing rugby, and rugby gave me a lot in my life. And... One of my friends just said, we don't have anything to do in January. Let's enter Dubai Marathon. I was like, yeah, it's easy. It's only 42K and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, and to make like even more ridiculous context, and it links into what you said, you know, we, that year I would played in, in the Rugby World Cup sevens and thousands of fans. And so I was like, up here. I could do anything and everything was cool. So obviously, we said, okay, we'll do it. And we'll run sub four hours, because that was what you did. Well, that's what everyone thinks is the sort of golden prize of running a marathon. And it started in Media City, 
And it, it just used to go straight down to the flagpole and then straight back, which is about as good as it is these days. Which was fun. Last weekend was fun watching the marathon. It's nice. I don't know, because you get to see people going round and round. Anyway, <coughs> so we, we met for a training run on about the 20th of December, and we met in Media City, and we ran down to the flagpole, got in a taxi and went home. Uh, <laughs> or went back to Media City, picked up our cars and went home. The next week, we did the same from the other end, so we knew what it was like going the other way. And then, obviously, I, I, I knew a little bit about training, and I said we need to make a long run, so we went to the Palm. I think it still has a Costa at the trunk of the Palm, and we ran all the fronds. And it was like 30K. And it was horrible. All of it was horrible. I couldn't feel my legs, and it was the biggest disaster. Anyway, I was like, we'll get there on, on the weekend, and it was the same. It was like the first weekend or the second weekend of Jan, and we were going to run four hours. And my friend who ridiculously called me and told me we were going to do it, he was in the toilets in 1K, and I never saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled out at like 5K. <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> Literally, no, it wasn't Rob. <laughs> and I sort of was like, well, this is it. I'm on my own. And, you know, looking, I, had a, I think I had a Polar watch then. It didn't really tell you GPS or anything. and just sort of told you the time. And, you know, you're calculating and making it more complicated than it needs to be. Long story short, I crossed the finish line, and it's like 401. And I was completely destroyed mentally and physically, and I stood under the, the finish line, I still have a picture of it now, and I had no idea what to feel. Mentally, physically, I'd failed, I'd just finished playing rugby, I'd come from here, thousands of people cheering, supporting, and I was here on my own. And I was like, this is terrible. I called one of my friends, went for lunch, he said, what do you think? I said, I'm never, ever gonna run again. <laughs> Marathon doesn't mean nothing, this, that, and the other. And he looked at me, and he started smiling, and he said, let's see. A good friend. <laughs> He's still my friend now, unfortunately. He said, don't make any decisions. He said pretty much exactly what I said on that diagram before. He said, just think about what I'm going to say. And he said, the feeling around what you've just done, what you're looking for in rugby, and what you are trying to replace it with in running, is not going to work as a direct fit. So the reason why I share that and I think it's important is sometimes we're trying to re-engineer things and replace different experiences with another experience without creating any awareness of the feelings that potentially come with them. And also being arrogant, quite frankly, and setting stupid goals and thinking that one run down the beach road and one run back and a few tootles around the palm would deliver a four-hour marathon. I think it needs a lot more awareness around the feelings related to things. But at the same time, I'm 100% sure if I didn't do that, I probably wouldn't be stood here today. So there's a lot of positives and negatives at the same time. Let's look at mental strength, because this is what we're told we all lack, right? The mind is not strong enough. Who said it? Who's had children? Easy. You can run any distance you want, any time you want, any day you want. You're strong enough to do that. <laughs> <laughs> And for those of you that haven't had children, you have the ability to go through what those ladies went through. You've made the, can I say wise decision not to, or whatever, we won't get into that. But you have the ability. The female population, hands down, has more mental strength than the male population. And I'm not just saying it because I'm the only guy in here and I need your support. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And the benefit, Generally, because of all of our feelings, we're always trying to suppress them. You guys are actually quite good at talking about stuff when you want to and when we've paved the way. So you all are strong enough mentally. But let's look at some ideas around mental strength. 
How would you define it? Anyone want to have a shot? Belief. Resilience. Resilience. You know, like I can't spell any of these, just <laughs> so you know. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Honesty. So we've got control and then mental land. Any other ideas? Stay focused. Sweet. Any more? Doesn't matter. How do we train those? Yep. Both red pens are not uh, <laughs> not great. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back to the other one. Doing hard things. What else? Yeah, this Yeah. How do we train these things though? That's what I'm trying to get to. You know what mental strength is? But how do, you, how do you train it? Like, let's take an example. If I change mental for physical, and I worked on a, an example, my physical strength is my ability to do a 5K run. This proves my physical strength. How do I train it? I go and see Steph. <laughs> Make it her problem. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, and she'll come with the training program, it'll do this, it'll do that, certain elements, this, that, and the other. And I'll invest time and resources into it accordingly. Plan? Plan? Oh. <laughs> yeah, which kind of also ties into this, right? Reframe your thoughts. Number one student, loves running from the age of zero, 
and gives the answer, the main answer I was looking. These are other things are not wrong, huh? We'll come to some uh, hard things we could do in a second. But again, this is my opinion on, on mental strength. It's all of these things, but it's rooted in awareness. And it's rooted in what Mary said, feelings. How many of you spend time when a run's gone good or bad, it doesn't matter, to create some awareness and some feeling around thoughts, consciously? Many? Getting better at it. How many of you spend time in, in like Training Peaks has a great option for it, right? In the comment section. Make her life really hard, make them really long <laughs> with links and stuff. Like that section allows you to do it. it, you don't have to do it there. But if we want to improve mental strength, and if we understand that mental strength aids the advancement of physical strength and aids the advancement of us as human beings, but we're not spending time to understand it, to have awareness around it, then, so the feeling of a run, why you want to do it, why you don't want to do it, what, what happened during it, what happened in the warm up, you can become, and this is where if you're someone that's kind of too much is too much, if you like to be that narrow dot in the middle, Relax a little bit about what I'm saying now. Don't try to go from that narrow dot to the big dot because you'll get anxiety that you're thinking of too much. But why not spend 30 minutes writing about what happened or talking about what happened and trying to create awareness around what happened? Because, yeah, I can, I can work on your mental strength, belief. I can get you to do hard things. Great. But still, if we go back to what we said at the start, what's the source of running? And we got the various sources of how our brain actually computes running. It's more about having some awareness around the feeling of it. And that, that really is the, the, the crux of how I would define mental strength, is a, is a heightened state of self-awareness. Mentally strong people are insanely aware in certain areas. Huh? They can be incredibly selfish, have no interpersonal skills, but what you'll find is people that, like mountaineers, generally, because they spend a lot of time on their own, they're not very good at having a conversation. But they can stay at minus five, at 5,000 meters above sea level for two weeks alone, in a tent, with no connection, with nothing. All they've got, is what we had here, their thoughts. So if we're talking about developing mental strength for running, for life, for whatever, the, one of the big checkpoints is how much time we're actually spending thinking about what's going on and not having to react. <laughs> That's the caveat. It doesn't define you. It doesn't have to define you unless you let it define you. But you can have a thought about something and it can just relax there. And then when you go into another run, and then you'll start to, it's all quite sort of, you know, and this and then you'll do this. But <clears throat> if you, Training Peaks introduced it, the smiley face, like how happy you were with, with the run. Uh, yeah, like, does anyone take two to three weeks and actually track it and go, ah, there's a pattern here? Or even more, because we're with ladies, four weeks, and go, well, that week's always great, and this week's not really that great, and that week gets better, and you know? So then when you're driving to a run and you have the awareness, and Tony Peaks is not the best app to, to track the female cycle for sure, but you can do it in there but then you can start to create these patterns and you know it, it's and then when you're going to a run on a certain day 
you should already have some feeling around how you might want to perform on that run. And that comes into, which is a great point here, planning. Let's do a quick test. Who's coming to Ladies Run Club tomorrow morning? What's the plan? Which is a good plan, right? <laughs> yeah. But as for the running, no, I guess yeah. my first step. So yeah. letting know that. Yep. Yeah. Which is good as well. And if you don't have a problem, like if you're not, where's the car? If we're not in the car having a meltdown, and we never have been in the car having a meltdown, then we're all good there. If we're not having a meltdown at 5.59, then we're all, and these are, these are the checkpoints of going through and collecting the data. But if we can have, and, and some people, and this is where we talk, spoke about stress, and we see it a lot, and, and you guys are, are exactly the same. You have way more stress in different areas than running. So for running, you just want to have, I'm going to turn up, I'm going to do exactly what she says, and I'm going to leave, and it's going to be fucking great. And I'm super happy with that. And every time, yeah. So there's no need to overthink it, yeah? And if every time that you get in the car and you come at 5.59 and you leave at 6.59, you feel amazing, don't touch it. Just leave it. But if you're finding issues that some days this is not enjoyable and then progress is not what you want it to be, and then you start to feel not great about it, then we have to. And it's easier if we have plans and data of what happened, it's easier to fix something when it's not going right, if that makes sense. So if you're running super good, just write why it's super good. That's OK, too. Or just be aware of why it's super good. What's making it super good? I'm getting to bed on time. I'm setting the alarm. I ha I've found someone that I absolutely trust. And everything's good. And it doesn't need to be, I don't want to rock the apple cart and make it any more complicated than that. Does that make sense? So this, and we can argue, not today, another day. This is kind of number one. This is number two. What hard things make us more mentally strong, except having children? Running in July, August. Yeah, heat. And humidity. Yeah. <laughs> showing up even if you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, showing up on good and bad days. What else? Yeah. Understanding sort of what, what your zones are of comfort. I mean, come to a mountain and get in a situation you know as well <laughs> that you just can't get out of. Oh, it was a great... Can I share the story? So Mary came with us, uh, I'm not sure if this is a good advert for coming with Rob and I to Chamonix, but still I'll tell it now, I've got myself in it. <laughs> yeah, she's still here. And uh, she didn't really know 100% what was going to happen, and we got to the top of this mountain, which took about two and a half hours, just vertically going up, which is quite challenging. And we start to come down, and at about 2,000 meters, the whole mountain was covered in snow. And... It was pretty much like this. And it's, if you've never been in that situation before, it's insanely scary because there is absolutely no way out. The mountain's like this. You have running shoes on that don't have any grip. It's snow and ice. And we kind of got down a little bit, and it's fun for about two seconds going down on your butt, and then you're absolutely soaking wet through and cold, and it's a nightmare. And it's like snowburn, <laughs> yeah. And on that day, it was even better because there was a lot of low-lying cloud. So this low-lying cloud came in, 
and you can't see where you are really and you can't see how far you've got to go and like where the route is. So you're almost in this, it was crazy, right? And I have this image and I, I, I'd probably never forget it of Mary's face and like she's just completely stranded in this snow. And it was steep, like it, it was bloody steep. And if you take one wrong foot, you slip and you'll probably roll and it made me actually think what safety measures we have in place, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> we cut that from the video. <laughs> So she stood there and of course freaking out, probably wanting to cry, probably crying a bit, I don't know, like we were just, I was just close to her trying to make sure she's okay, you know, and safe. And probably about 3,000 different thoughts went through her head, of which the prevailing one was, get me the fuck off this mountain as fast as possible. <laughs> and literally it's one of those, I want to shut my eyes and I just want to be in the coffee shop at the bottom. But nothing changed. The weather got a little bit worse, if anything, got a little bit colder. The snow was still there, the mountain was still steep. But she found a, a composure and went easily down to the bottom. That's probably why she came with doing hard things. The beautiful thing is, when she woke up that morning, she probably had no idea that that's what she would do. So sometimes the hard things come as a surprise. Sometimes we can wait till July before we join Ladies Run Club. <laughs> as long as Steph's not on holiday. <laughs> and things like that. But yeah, I think this is, this is personal to, to, to everyone as well. But I think it would be wrong for me to say I'm not a massive advocate of trying to figure out what's hard, what's challenging. Most of the time, if you carry out number one, number two actually becomes just a matter of process. So by that I mean, if we're to take a run, <coughs> excuse me, if we're to take a run in summer, like, what's the worst thing that can happen running in July? <laughs> that happened to 10,000 people on Sunday in the marathon. <laughs> there's actually no, <clears throat> there's no worst case scenario. And it's weird, right? Everyone's face is like blank or like that I'm speaking nonsense in a nice way. But what's the worst thing that can happen here? Mary's situation in Chamonix was a little bit worse. Like, to be totally honest, and I'll, I'll say it, if she'd have slipped at the wrong point, we could have had a problem. It's okay now. <laughs> Any lawyers? <laughs> but if you, look at, <clears throat> if you look at a lot of the hard things that maybe you do, you start to create the awareness and ask yourself the question, like, what actually is the worst thing that can happen here? You'll have a headache, you'll be dehydrated, you'll, you'll have to stop. So if you plan to do, you know, if you went out and planned to do 15 minutes and you only did five. Wow, who cares? Like you stopped because it was super hot, you had a headache, it was dangerous, and you get zero positive training. So you stopped at five minutes. That's super reasonable, right? We all agree that that's a reasonable thing to do. Who's done that and stopped at five minutes and had the shittest day of their life? Not the shittest, but been grumpy for the rest of the day because they stopped. Yeah. Everybody. Why do we do it? We, we, we all want to achieve good things.
<laughs> and man, they're brilliant. <laughs> Everyone's in the bushes. <laughs> Let's take what you said, because you've come back to a point that we should talk about a little bit. Does anybody, did, did any of you work together? Sorry. Do any of you live together? Nah. So that makes you all quite unique. <laughs> it's not a trick question. <laughs> no, but if you look at what Amanda's saying there. Like, that day that you couldn't do those 20, we've gone a little bit away, we'll come back to hard things, but we've mentioned stress a few times. We all have different levels of stress, huh? So, what other people have is completely different to what you have. And stress, everything is a stress response. Running is a stress response, driving here is a stress response, husbands, Boyfriends, children, jobs, everything you have is stressing you out in different ways. And you can only get stressed to a certain point and then you explode. Quite sadly, often we explode in sport. Because sometimes if we explode at work, we have to hold things together in work because we're worried that we might not be there tomorrow. But this is a little bit as well linked into the awareness of your stress. So that particular day it could have been uber high stress through a number of different things. It's actually completely irrelevant what anyone else is doing. For you, doing something hard was running that X minutes. And I think that's probably one of the... the and it, Everyone says, or a lot of people say, this is more females than males. It's actually more males than females. This whole imposter, I'm not good enough, he's doing that, she's doing that, I should be going faster. The number of people that say to me, I can't come to track because I'm not good enough. What's good enough? Like, it's completely irrelevant. Every single one of you has a completely different set of circumstances. Yes, it's hard. And I get when you run with a group and a community, there's so many positive things as well because you can go, yeah, they're going that quick and I'll get a little bit quicker and soon I'll go past them. I feel really good about it. And, you know, everyone does that and that's okay too. But when you let it become crippling, <clears throat> when you let it pull you down, then your awareness has somehow become distorted as well. If you plan, if you have an idea and you kind of know, but then you have the awareness that I'm not feeling great today, I've had loads of stress through work, through all these other things, it's okay. Because it's the same as what will happen if I plan to run 15 minutes and it's super hot and I only run five, nothing will happen. Everything will be okay. It, it really will be. If you're Creating awareness on an ongoing basis, if you're using the tools that you have, either within training peaks, within journaling, however you look at it, if you're using those tools, you'll, you'll get the patterns. If this is happening all the time, we can also just ask why. And start to understand, like, is it wrong that you've been asked to run for 15 minutes? Should we make it 10? How would that feel? Oh, that would feel great. It's really achievable. No, but it said in the, the program's useless. That's why a more personalized program, that's generally why off-the-shelf programs are tough. You know, because it doesn't really, they're great, 
and, and you know, a girl who just ran a super fast marathon through an app. Incredibly impressive. But she has an insane amount of awareness and has worked in sport at the highest level. That's why she was able to do it. But you can change everything around based on stress levels. If you're not aware of your stress levels, if you don't speak about your stress levels, if you don't understand that what some idiot said to you at work or in a business meeting will affect your running, then you will continue to have elevated levels of stress and you'll have scenarios where you have to run through the park and be a bit naughty. Does that make sense? What else do we think about doing hard things? Mary's example, Amanda's running in the heat. This is actually hard. Showing up. Consistently. <clears throat> when you look at the mindset, if we look at a little bit of consistency and What's the plan this week? The plan this week, Sunday, we can all get fired up. We're going to run four times. And one of those runs is going to be, or two of those runs are going to be hard. Two are going to be easy. And one is going to be 50-50 now. We're not sure yet. But then we go back to the scenario that stress is super high. Then what do we do with it? Temper it a bit, and that's okay. But what happens sometimes, if it's a hard run, and it's been a stressful day, it's very hard. It becomes even harder because you're, you're already in a heightened state of stress. So there has to be a little bit of, to, consistency is, is absolutely the key. But the awareness to actually change this run, or sometimes rest, which is super hard for me. <laughs> I won't talk too much about rest. <laughs> but move at a different intensity to what it is supposed to be will actually build your mindset as well, rather than dropping it down. Because if you, st and the scenario here is, if this run is supposed to be hard, You've had a super stressful day. You try and do it, and you fail. How do you feel? Worse. Say that again. Worse. This is free. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful what you say in front of her, right? Yeah, you always feel worse. But how good would you feel if you just went out and ran easy for 30 minutes and maybe listen, or walked and maybe listened to a podcast that completely reset the mind and you got home and everything was awesome? And I know we're talking a lot about the end of the day. The stress from the previous day can obviously go to the next morning, right? And we've all woken up thinking about a problem that whether it's professional or personal that we faced the day before, that's still on our mind. In that heightened state of stress, the chances of you absolutely ending yourself and getting a good session is super low. If you can, you have very good skills on compartmentalizing. But if you went out that morning and ran for 30 minutes easy, walked, did something different to move, you'd feel pretty good. So, and. The easy part is actually massively related to hard. To do easy, because we all want to achieve great things, is hard for a lot of people. Make sense? Who gets more excited about an easy run than a hard run? Nobody. It's boring. Heart rate's not going to go up. I'm not going to get any records in training peaks, any special tick boxes. It's, just, oh, it's easy. Oh, it's great, though. You go out and take it easy. Who likes doing hard things? Well, that's good. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Yeah. And because it builds... It helps to build mental strength. You said it earlier, right? 
what's the easiest hard thing? We've spoken about heat. We've spoken about showing up. Who likes standing in queues? Yeah, it's crazy. It's horrible, isn't it? Or who likes queuing in Waitrose for a park? Right? You can actually train hard things without running. Next time you're in a queue, find a way to enjoy it. Next time you're at Waitrose queuing for a park, <laughs> no, no chance. Eh? <laughs> it's hard. But if you're... If you can't stand in a queue for 20 minutes, how can you do a threshold session that has your heart rate at 180 that could last for 30 minutes with your heart rate at 180? It's a little bit of a different way of, of but hard things is not, to be honest, I think only 20% of hard things to build mindset is related to physical training. Something hard would be sitting with your feelings about, for example, running. Every time before you ran, every time after you run. Building a heightened state of awareness around your feelings for running. That's very, 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 very hard. And again, if you're someone that get too much is too much, don't start with that. But there are a number of things you can do to train your mindset that absolutely nothing to do with running. If you want some ideas, I have many lists. Cold showers. Shot was cold in the UK. <laughs> Does anyone do you do cold showers? Yeah. yeah. Saves water. The soap doesn't. Uh, lather the same way though as with hot and you can't wash your hair so special days for for cold showers there are certain things as well obviously that from a physical standpoint i think everyone should i think to build mindset we should know what we're doing that's hard physically if that makes sense so at certain points of the year or at certain points of your week, because it's all very good, easy, we'll change, we're nice and relaxed with this, but when it's on, when this hard run is on, we should demand high standards and performance. And that's why if we can understand what the best time to have that experience is, then our chances of us being successful at it will go massively up so you know yes go for your hot run <coughs> middle of july maybe don't do it if you've landed that morning at 6 a.m we've kind of set, we're setting ourselves up for a but make sure we we do it like that i remember the first ultra that i entered was in oman in 2014 the first big one and it was 300 kilometers single stage and I was like, this is just, and at 180K, I sat down on the sand and I woke up eight hours later. I was completely, we'd been awake for 65 hours straight and it had like a 90 hour cut off and I still had 120 to go and there was only like 27 hours or something like that. I'm so glad I woke up late. <laughs> we woke up in the middle of nowhere and it was just like, wow, this is just, it's nuts. But when we set out, we knew that actually to make it to the end, and it's not, it, there wasn't an out. We were going to keep going until we couldn't because there was awareness around it. But I was like, this, this will be incredibly hard to do because the cutoff for 300K and it had 130Ks of about six or 7,000 meters elevation of mountains. And then the last 140K was through a desert which you can't even run on. It's actually not a run, it's a stupid walk. And it was just gonna be super hard from the start. But the repercussions of it, because we created some awareness around it, some thoughts, some feelings, actually probably is what kept me doing ultras. And they never did that race again.
Not me, but they never ran it again. They only ran it once because it was too dangerous. Only 20% of the people that started finished, so I didn't feel too bad either with the whole uh, comparison syndrome as well. I think the final point, let's clear the board. Oh, we have four minutes. Almost on time. <laughs> we can go over, right? If we're having fun. My final point links into a little bit what I started out with, the source and, 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 and why we run. But I hate to destroy anyone's future aspirations. But when it comes to running, I think the best way to describe us all is rank amateurs. The current men's world record for 10K is on the road or on the track is about 26 minutes. The guy that has it is about 23 years old. I'm 45. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right? It's funny to think about it like this. So I think sometimes we can get a little bit... <gasps> You know, and this is my life, and it's everything this year, and it's 2024, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. As long as you know why you're getting the results that you're getting, and this is what we're trying to do, we somehow have an angle of progression for you that sometimes it's like that, sometimes it's a little bit flatter, but we're running to make our lives maybe a little bit better. And I think that gets lost a lot of the time. And we do our head in, and I'm not enjoying my running at the moment. Okay, stop. <laughs> I'm 15 minutes, I'm five minutes in, my heart's exploding. Stop. So long as you know why. Take an extra rest day. Adjust things. Put something ahead of something else. Tweak a few different things. Because tomorrow, we all have to go to work. We have children to take care of. That actually, if we continue this arrow in this direction, will bring massive positive impact to all of those things. We run to make our lives better. So if you're ever in a situation where you're feeling it's making you worse, it's causing you anxiety, stress, no fun from it at all. We need to change something. And that's why two things to finish. And Steph hates this, but I ask her it all the time. Is it fun? Are you excited? That's another word that she likes me to use. If you're excited tonight about setting the alarm clock to come tomorrow, it's the most beautiful scenario we could be in. And if tomorrow night, when you set the alarm clock to come to track on Tuesday, you feel fulfilled from what you did, from what you're excited about, you've served yourself in the most incredible way. And your mindset will continue to develop. The mental strength that we spoke about will all continue to develop. And the final, final point is if it doesn't go good today, you have tomorrow, most probably. You should have tomorrow. And if you don't, you'll be somewhere else. It'll be paradise too. Thanks for listening. I can answer any questions. If you want, or if, you've, if you're done, we'll be done. Oh, someone wants to join now. <laughs> <laughs> any questions or any thoughts? Maybe you start, if you want to share something, or is everyone just wants to leave? It's cool. <laughs>
It's like the meathead guys in the gym, isn't it? Just thumping weight nonstop. Like, that's a really good, it's the same thing. You can, anyone can do the hard things, but if there's no connection and exactly what you said and no awareness. I think that's, that's super true, and, and like, I see it a lot with people downstairs. They have anxiety about setting the alarm clock. Like, for real. You know? So, the hardest thing to get some people to do is actually to set an alarm clock to be somewhere, because then that's the, the commitment to do it. So we talk about running in here and going to stupid marathons there or this or that or the other. Like, the things that are way before. And that's okay. Like, it doesn't matter. And if, if you felt that before, that's cool as well. Just trying to figure out how to go through it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk about injury, did we? I, uh, stupid guy. <laughs> yeah. But it's there's two or three things that you said there that are so true. Like, you've been practicing sport some people for a number of years. Their studies, it doesn't just go like that. Your fitness, your, your muscle tissue doesn't just go to become a sedentary person immediately. And the second thing on injury, and the more I coach people, the more I train myself, most of your injuries are not coming, like they're all coming, to tell you to stop. It's just the final bit that snaps the tension. That's what it is. It's to, it's a sign, an injury is a sign to slow down. It's a sign to change track. But most of the time, and, and this is the thing, this is another thing about injury. My Achilles is sore. Sweet. Yeah, it's sore when I run. Okay, cool. What are you doing today? Running. Like, it's crazy, right? So, you know, it's, and that's what I say to people, does it hurt when you run? Yes or no? No. Okay, so you can run. Does it hurt when you sit down? Yes. It, you know, because injuries are, it's something come, I think it's something coming out of the body to, it's, it's there for a reason, it's a sign. And you get so many signs before something <laughs> cracks. Not many people need back surgery from today till tomorrow. Most people, yeah, I noticed it a couple of years ago when I started doing stuff like this. What did you, nothing. They didn't do anything about it. You know, and then it just gets progressively worse. So if you are feeling something that's not quite right, just try, we try and, with Steph, with one of us, just try and figure out why, why that feeling is coming as, a, as an injury. It's very hard though, isn't it? Because all you think about when you can't do something, is doing it. <laughs> it's carnage. Yeah. I think the big takeaway for me is just when I do have those sessions, it's particularly like I know in the community it just makes me feel exhausted. Mm. Trend where you can't run anymore, even just those sessions. 
Because like literally last Friday, I was in bed drunk for the past year. So Amazing. the fact that I had a terrible run in September on Monday night. <laughs> it means nothing. Hundred percent. But we sometimes somehow let it let it cripple us, right? And we hold on to stuff and like tell me about your bad runs. And we're like, oh, I did this session this time, it was just horrible. You know, and they can reel them off and then okay, tell me about something good. Because maybe we expect it to go good, we don't expect it to go bad, and we always expect it to go good, but if if we're realistic, not everything is smooth. It's things are up and down. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Hope you have a lovely Sunday. Thank you for listening. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it.